Hidden to most people, Russia and China have regularly assaulted U.S. satellites. Both countries have tested missiles that can destroy the United States at hypersonic speeds. The U.S. is now in a solid position to make a move in this global game of chess, and they just made one that almost qualifies them as a grandmaster. In response to mounting worries that China and Russia have had more success creating their own hypersonic weapons, the Pentagon announced recently that the United States conducted two successful hypersonic missile tests with Lockheed Martin Corp. In this video, we intend to bring about hidden truths about this missile test and how this response has astonished Russia and China. Let's begin. The United States successfully tested two Lockheed hypersonic missiles. The United States Air Force has announced that its air-launched rapid response weapon rocket had a successful test off the coast of California. According to Reuters, the air-launched rapid response weapon test involved lifting the booster under the wing of a B-52H before launching it. The weapon did not separate from the plane during earlier tests. This second successful test demonstrates air-launched rapid response weapon ability to reach and withstand operational hypersonic speeds, collect crucial data for further flight tests, and validate safe separation from the aircraft, Lockheed said. Air Force Brigadier General Heath Collins, Executive Program Officer of the Armament Directorate, said, We have now completed our booster test series and are ready to move forward to all-up round testing later this year. The warhead and the booster are part of the all-up round. At around 6,000, 200 kilometers, 3,853 miles per hour, or more than five times the speed of sound. Hypersonic weapons go through the upper atmosphere. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency reported that it effectively carried out the first test of its operational fires, hypersonic weapon, in a separate hypersonic weapon test. The test was carried out in New Mexico's White Sands Missile Range. The successful tests signal advancement in several U.S. efforts to produce hypersonic weapons, which have occasionally been hampered by test failures, financial concerns and growing worries that the country is losing ground in an arms race between superpowers. A ground launch system called Operational Fires is designed to rapidly and precisely engage critical, time-sensitive targets while penetrating modern enemy air defenses. In the fiscal year 2022, DARPA asked for and got $45 million for op fires. Using an existing high-mobility artillery rocket system launcher, similar to those used in Ukraine, is one of Lockheed Martin's concepts for the DARPA weapon. The common hypersonic light body, a different kind of hypersonic missile, was tested unsuccessfully on June 29 at the Pacific Missile Range facility in Hawaii. Defense industry players intend to profit from developing hypersonic weapons by creating new systems for their detection and destruction and manufacturing them. As the world's attention switched to the new arms race for an emerging type of weapon, arms producers such as Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman Corporation, and Raytheon Technologies Corporation all bragged about their hypersonic weapons programs to investors. Chinese and American arms race involving hypersonic weapons, according to the Secretary of the U.S. Air Force, as Beijing and Washington continue to develop and test a growing number of high-speed next-generation weapons. There is a race between the two countries to produce the most deadly hypersonic weapons. In an interview with Reuters at his Pentagon headquarters, Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall stated that there is a race for more excellent quality rather than necessarily more quantity of weapons. It's an arms race that has been going on for quite some time. The Chinese have been at it very aggressively. General Mark Milley, the highest military official in the United States, confirmed a Chinese test of hypersonic weaponry in October. According to military analysts, it is Beijing's pursuit of an Earth-orbiting system built to circumvent American missile defenses. The Pentagon tested hypersonic weapons to varying degrees of effectiveness numerous times this year. The Navy tested a booster rocket motor that would successfully propel a launch vehicle carrying a hypersonic weapon in October. Kendall noted that while the U.S. military has focused funds on Iraq and Afghanistan, it has taken its eye off the ball regarding hypersonic weapons. This isn't saying we've done nothing, but we haven't done enough, he said. Kendall aims to raise money as the Pentagon enters the 2023 annual budget cycle by retiring more expensive to maintain systems in favor of new ones, like development initiatives for hypersonic technology. Kendall aims to raise money as the Pentagon enters the 2023 annual budget cycle by retiring more expensive to maintain systems in favor of new ones, like development initiatives for hypersonic technology. Countries testing hypersonic weapons it is even more astonishing that the U.S. is reluctant to have a publicly acknowledged hypersonic program, given that other countries outside North Korea, China, and Russia possess deployable hypersonic missiles. Many other nations are also working on producing hypersonic weaponry. These nations include Australia, India, France, Germany, South Korea, and Japan. 
It's also interesting to note that the U.S. has partnered with some of them. To develop hypersonic technology, the United States and Australia have collaborated on the Hypersonic International Flight Research Experimentation Initiative since 2007. According to analysts, the DMAX Experimental Maneuvering Vehicle Program, which might give Paris access to a strategic nuclear weapon, has opted to weaponize hypersonic technology. France has five hypersonic wind tunnels that can test speeds up to match 21. A test of an experimental hypersonic glider was conducted in Germany as part of the Atlas II project of the European Union, which aims to develop a Mach 5 to 6 vehicle. It continues to study and test hypersonic vehicles. Germany runs three hypersonic wind tunnels and has a Mach 11 test speed. According to reports, South Korea is creating the Hi-Core Mach 6 Plus hypersonic cruise missile in response to mounting concerns over North Korea's military modernization. According to reports, Japan is working on the hypersonic cruise missile and the hypervelocity gliding projectile for neutralizing aircraft carriers and suppressing large areas. A cooperative analysis focusing on future counter-hypersonic technological collaboration has also been agreed upon between Japan and the United States. Comparison between Russian and the U.S. hypersonic weapons According to the Biden administration's budget proposal for the fiscal year 2023, the Pentagon intends to press on with the rapid development and deployment of hypersonic weapons capabilities across its services, despite inevitable setbacks in testing and concerns about how effective they may be in warfare. On the other hand, in March, Russian airstrikes using Kinsel air-launched ballistic missiles on two locations in Ukraine, making it the first country to employ modern hypersonic weapons in battle. Expert opinions state that Russia deployed the Kinsel system in 2018 and the Avangard hypersonic boost glide vehicle in 2019. The Air Force, Army, and Navy of the United States are all working on at least five hypersonic weapons projects. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency is also working on four of them DARPA. China may have used its first hypersonic weapon in 2020 and Russia are aiming towards nuclear or dual-capable hypersonic capabilities, while the United States is pursuing a conventional-only capacity. Due to this, congressmen and defense officials have asserted that Washington has lagged behind Moscow and Beijing. As a result, they have supported efforts to speed up the development of American hypersonic weapons to deploy this capability as soon as possible and catch up to, and eventually surpass China and Russia. We're behind our adversaries in hypersonics, Rep. Mike Turner, a House Armed Services Committee member, said on April 5. Jen Mark Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, minimized this technology's immediate impact on the battlefield after Russia had utilized hypersonic missiles in Ukraine. The Russians have used several hypersonic missiles, Milley told Congress on May 11. Other than the speed of the weapon, in terms of its effect on a given target, we are not seeing really significant or game-changing effects to date with the delivery of the small number of hypersonics that the Russians have used. The chief of research and development has stated that the Pentagon still wants military contractors to lower the final cost of hypersonic weapons because the next generation of ultra-fast missiles currently being produced costs tens of millions of dollars per unit. Whatever the case, only one thing is certain that whoever possessed these hypersonic missiles, be it Russia or the US, they would have an immense military edge over their adversary. Make sure to let us know your thoughts down below. Subscribe to the channel as a sacrifice to the gods of the algorithm. Thanks for watching.